What up, AOK -OK Mafia? It's your boy, Arthur Kicks It Just Like That. We back with another one. Alright, y'all. So today, we got an interesting video here. It's a long one, too. We're going to be here a little while. This is Researchers Discovers What No One Was Supposed to See. This is part two. Y'all ready? We might see some new stuff here, some new creatures. Some new animals. Ain't no telling. Let's find out. Y'all let this We're all pretty familiar with the regular animals. If you can't tell the difference between a horse and a cat by now, you should probably get out of the house a little more. Then there's the weird animals like the platypus and the kangaroo and basically anything from Australia. But we are sure they exist at least. What about all the freaky crazy animals that scientists are desperately trying Trying to figure out. From the colorful octopus to the brand new bat, here's the 20 what? strangest creatures recently discovered. <sighs> Number 20. Rare rainbow blanket octopuses caught on camera in the Philippines. When a marine biologist obtained Yo. film of a rare blanket octopus whirling through the waters near the Great Barrier Reef, she described it as a once-in-a-lifetime encounter. Jacinta Shackleton found the rainbow-hued fish. What the what? Wait a minute. Yo, I thought I'd seen everything. This is a new type of octopus? I've never seen one without, like, just defiant tentacles with suction cups on it. What is this big old... It's a rainbow! What is this coming out of it? While snorkeling on Lady Elliot Island, off wow. the coast of Queensland, and she was ecstatic, what? Shackleton told reporters the colors in her cape were incredible, and it was fascinating to watch Yo. the way she moved through the water. When I first saw it, I mistook it for a young fish with long fins, but as I got closer, I realized it was a blanket octopus, and I couldn't stop myself from jumping up and down. For me, it was undoubtedly a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and I am eternally thankful. Wow. She didn't say how big it was, but females may grow up to six feet long. She also didn't say how she managed to jump up and down underwater. Males, on the other hand, are around the same size of a walnut, which researchers believe is due to the fact that they die soon after mating. Why bother growing, I guess? The blanket octopus spends much of its time drifting in the open ocean, which is why an up-close and personal meeting is so unusual, according to Shackleton. The aquatic species was first identified in 1963, and its name comes from the sheets of webbing that spread between parts of its arms. With the aim of frightening away predators, it will spread its arms out to create a blanket-like appearance. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. My nose is really itching. Time for the rare topic. Out in the forests of Germany, a researcher was looking for new insect species when he picked up what he thought was a pretty weird looking stick insect, and it turned out to have a human face. I don't have it over here. I was looking for my last cap cap. Cause that's cap. <laughs> Yo, man. It, it, come on now. It, anybody with a few little arts and crafts skills can make this. Come on. Come. Look, if you don't keep it, send it in for some research. And all type of documents have been put out about this thing and its existence. Then I don't believe it. Not long after he took this snap, some security guards showed up and led the man away. On his way out, he was driven past a place hidden in the forest, but he managed to read a sign saying Fairy Cloning Lab. This researcher discovered what no one was supposed to see. What could the Germans be up to with cloning fairies? Why is this being kept secret, or is it all a hoax? Comment down below with the hashtag rare topic, and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let us keep things moving. Number 19. 
New bat species discovered in West Africa. In 2018, a group of researchers traveled to the Nimba Mountains in West Africa in quest of a severely endangered bat species they came upon another on their journey, Myotis nimbaensis. A new bat species with unique orange and black colors was described for the first time last Wednesday in American Museum Novidates. Winifred Frick, research co-author and head scientist of Bat Conservation International, told the American Museum of Natural History. In an age of extinction, a discovery like this offers a glimmer of hope. It's a magnificent creature. Frick was exploring natural caves and mining shafts in Guinea's Nimba Mountains with a team of scientists from Bat Conservation International and the University of Maroa in Cameroon. The Sky Islands, which rise nearly a mile above sea level, are key biodiversity hotspots for animals such as bats. The Lamotte's round leaf bat, or Hipposideros lamate, is a critically endangered bat species found exclusively in the Nimba Mountains, particularly in abandoned mining shafts known as adits. However, when looking for existing species, the scientists discovered something unexpected. The Washington Post quoted John Flanders, director of endangered species, which is so crazy that they actually went looking for bats. It makes almost makes more sense for them to have discovered a new species of bat because they were looking for a specific bat that, you know, is dwindling in, in the amount of species or in that species. It's interesting. I feel like if they were going looking for maybe a, a, a specific bug <laughs> that may be extinct, then they wouldn't have known about the bat because if they were looking for bugs, then their research is usually conducted solely around bugs. Intervention at Bat Conservation International as saying, I looked in a net and there was just something interesting there. Flanders claimed he first spotted the bat with the University of Marwa colleague Eric Mose Bakwo Fils. And now they've given the world a new creepy creature. Number 18. Shape-shifting whalefish. What? Scientists controlling a remote submarine have seen one of the deep sea's most intriguing and elusive species for the first time around 6,600 feet deep offshore of Monterey Bay. 6,000. To see this fish, you gotta go 6,600 feet below. The water gets that deep? That's crazy! California, a brilliant orange female whalefish of the order Cetomimiforms, was discovered half swimming, half gliding through the glare of submarine lights during 34 years of deep sea investigation. The whalefish sighting was one of just 18 made by marine biologists from the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute. The institute tweeted, Whalefish have rarely been seen alive in the deep, so many mysteries remain regarding these remarkable fish. With each deep sea dive, we uncover more mysteries and solve others. Because that is so crazy. Like, how is that even a thing? <laughs> how is that even a thing? What? Oh my god. 34 years of school marine voyagers submarine voyagers and they've only seen this fish a little over a dozen times that's crazy so little is known about whalefish the three vastly different forms the animals can take throughout their lives were mistaken for entirely different zoological families for more than a century after their discovery they were first recorded in 1895 by two smithsonian institution scientists the tape tails for example are scaleless larval forms with long streamer-like tails and mouths with a hilarious overbite that dwell and eat near the ocean surface. When it's time for these fish to mature into adults, they'll have two distinct body types to choose from. That's a pretty crazy creature. Number 17. New whale species found off Mexico. Whales are probably not the first thing that comes to mind when you think of the Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf, on the other hand, is incredibly biodiverse. With a How can that be a new species of whale? With the way these fishermen be scooping up everything in the water, like how is it that a new species of whale 
unless um what is it called freak i can't think of what it's called evolution unless evolution happened rapidly like within the last five years how could there be a new species this is fascinating a variety of whales swimming through its waters on a regular basis there's a new one in the science books right now researchers reported in january 2021 that they had found a separate new to us whale species provisionally termed the rice's whale named after one of its researchers or simply the gulf of mexico whale in an exciting time for marine science there may be just 50 50 of these whales left on Earth, and most sightings have been confirmed in the De Soto Canyon. A spec. Oh, hey, hold on. There's a whale that they just discovered, and they're already saying that there's only 50 left, as if this brand new whale is about to go extinct. It just goes to show you it's not new. And we know very little about our oceans, but yet we're destroying them. Spectacular deep water feature 60 miles off the coast of Pensacola, Florida. Whales have been spotted in the Gulf of Mexico around Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Texas. Scientists had assumed that they were merely a colony of another type of whale, the endangered bride's whale, since the 1960s. However, additional investigation by experts in Japan and and the United States discovered that some of the whales mistakenly identified as brides are actually a different species entirely. The finding highlights how much more we still need to understand about our seas, as well as the need of protecting what's living in our waters before species diminish and vanish. Soon after the news of the new Gulf of Mexico whales emerged, Earth Justice teamed together with other organizations to campaign for a special speed zone to slow ships in areas where the whales are most regularly seen think well, well maybe that's a good thing i think maybe they did that either to protect the whales or to study the whales themselves can be as large as a railroad boxcar and weigh as much as a regular fire truck because whales in the Gulf of Mexico spend much of their time within 50 feet of the water's surface, they are particularly vulnerable to ship strikes. Exactly, and that's what I thought too. If whales have to stay somewhat close to the surface of the water, because and think about that too. As deep as the water goes, whales don't travel that far down. You know what I'm saying? It was just so crazy to think about. But with that being said, you would think that these wells couldn't have been just discovered in 2021. How? I don't know. Number 16, elusive glass octopus. Pause. In case somebody have seen these wells many a times, but there wasn't a, a name for them until last year. Exclusive glass. This is crazy. A see-through octopus. We just saw a rainbow one. Now we see in a completely transparent one, and it looks amazing. When an underwater robot captured this seldom observed, that is so crazy because it's almost like a freaking a jellyfish. Like a jellyfish can be completely transparent or like see-through like this. Glass octopus what? gracefully flying through the deep waters of the central Pacific Ocean, it bared everything, even a peak of its innards. During a 34-day trip off the isolated Phoenix Islands, an island located more than 3,200 miles northeast of Sydney, Australia, marine researchers Ow. discovered the rare glass octopus. Glass octopuses, like other glass organisms, such as glass frogs and some comb jellies are virtually totally transparent with the exception of their cylindrical eyes, optic nerve, and digestive tract. The expedition team recorded two encounters with glass octopuses, which is an astonishing number given that's amazing and that scientists previously had to learn about these transparent cephalopods by analyzing fragments of them in the digestive contents of their predators it wasn't until 1918 that glass octopuses were identified according to the international union for conservation of nature these cephalopods live in tropical and subtropical areas of the deep ocean in the mesopelagic or twilight zone 600 
1,056 to 3,280 feet below the surface. So that's far. That's deep. I can't. That's, that's too much pressure on my lungs. And the bathypelagic or midnight zone, 3,280 to 9,800 feet below the surface. Number 15, Emperor Dumbo. A new species of Dumbo octopus has- Yo, these are so crazy. These are literally the pigs of the sea. They look like freaking pigs been discovered look at this flop in his ears in the deep complete with unmistakable and adorable fins on its head the beautiful species dubbed emperor dumbo like a freaking pokemon was discovered in 2016 when a bizarre species was caught in one of the German survey ship r slash v sun's nets in the Aleutian Islands, Alexander Zeigler of Friedrich Wilhelm University in Bonn, Germany. Yo, this octopus got short tentacles and freaking wings as ears. Germany was aboard as the resident biologist. We weren't really hunting for it, Zeigler told reporters, so it was a pretty fortuitous find. Furthermore, the entire animal made it to the surface unharmed. Typically, such nets harm species with a lot of delicate tissue, such as octopuses. This one, on the other hand, was in perfect shape, with no small achievement considering it was caught at a depth of 14 1760 feet. Ooh, I thought 3,000 was pressure on the chest. 14,000 feet below. Oh my god, that's far down there. And this thing is moving around like, huh, this water don't phase me. On board the ship, Seigler easily identified the octopus as an adult male Dumbo, a species of tiny sea octopus. The umbrella-like webbing connecting their tentacles and their cartoonishly ear-like fins that mimic the huge ears on Disney's Dumbo, Dumbo yeah. elephant figure can be used to identify Dumbo octopus species. Number 14. Dumbo octopus species? That means there's more than one different type of Dumbo octopus? The freak, what is it holding? T-Rex ant found alive for first time, rare species. What? In 2003, a Malaysian entomologist discovered a single dead ant with tiny pincers that reminded him of Tyrannosaurus rex's little limbs. He called the new species Tyrannomyrmex rex, of course. Got that, Minecraft fans? According to Michael Greshko of National Geographic, researchers have discovered a surviving colony of the species more than a decade later, and it turns out the small ant isn't quite as dangerous as its namesake. Entomologists Mark Wong and Gordon Young discovered the ants in March 2016, while patrolling the Mandai woodlands in Singapore, according to Greshko. The researchers investigated the behavior of a colony of 13 workers, as well as eggs, larvae, and pupae. Their findings were published in the journal Asian Myrmecology. According to Gizmodo's Ryan F. Metalbaum, the ants were nothing like the researchers had imagined. Mm -hmm. To begin with, entomologists thought the ants needed pristine woods to exist, but the scientists discovered them thriving in rotting wood in a second growth forest near rubbish piles on a military post. Second, they are truly fearful of cats, unlike their namesake. What? Wong tells Metalbaum, I find their shy nature ironic and amusing. Tyranno Miramax translates to tyrant ant. Tyranno is Latin for tyrant and Miramax is Greek for ant, but it quickly became clear that these ants are far from tyrants, as evidenced by the way they freeze up when other organisms approach, then quickly flee. According to Greshko, the ants were terrified of millipedes, mites, and even tiny ants. They were even afraid of honey droplets, Ah, Number 30. Yeah, because I'm over here looking at these guys, and it doesn't seem like they're doing any harm to, like, these whatever these other things are. I don't know if they're wasp or flying ants or something. I don't know. But they don't seem to be doing any harm to anything that's in there with them. They let the little freaking minipede thing just walk all over them. Look at this. See that? Ants needed pristine. That thing touched every foot on him. <laughs> 
a sponge that looked suspiciously like. Hey, look, it's, it's SpongeBob. It's, it's, it's what's the star names? Patrick. It's SpongeBob and Patrick because this looks like a square sponge. And Patrick Small. SpongeBob SquarePants was discovered by an ocean expedition investigating more than a mile beneath the surface of the Atlantic this week. A pink sea star, a lookalike for Patrick, SpongeBob's dim witted closest pal, was right next to it. One of the scientists monitoring a live video from a submersible deployed from the NOAA ship Okinos Explorer was Christopher Ma. He's a research associate at the National Museum of Natural History who works with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration on a regular basis. He's also a starfish specialist. The aquatic animals bore a striking resemblance to Ma's animated pals. They're just a dead ringer for the cartoon characters, Ma tells NPR. So he posted a photo of the two, pointing out the similarities, which drew a lot of attention. Someone was kind enough to add faces and legs, rather of cooling together underwater water, Ma believes the critter's intimacy is due to something else. Sponge is a favorite food of sea stars. In all likelihood, the reason that starfish is right next to that sponge is because that sponge is just about to be devoured, at least in part, he explains. Or perhaps- I wonder if Spongebob knew that, that, um, that Patrick, <laughs> his type, his kind, they like to eat sponges. Perhaps not. According to Ma, the sponge's chemical defenses may explain its vivid yellow color. In reality, a little crueler than perhaps a cartoon would suggest. He adds, in any case, a sponge is classified as her twitchia, whereas a starfish is classified as Crondraster. According to Ma, the starfish spotted by the expedition was most likely a Condraster grandis, which is a pink starfish that inspired the Patrick figure. Man, I feel like both of those things inspired freaking SpongeBob, the cartoon. Number 12. Newly described chameleon from the Madagascar may be world's smallest reptile. Nah. Frank Glaw, a German herpetologist, has assisted in the description of approximately 200 new species from Madagascar, but the most recent is noteworthy. Brookesia nana is a chameleon that may be the world's tiniest reptile. It is perhaps the smallest chameleon on the planet. B. nana is just shy of 14 millimeters long. Oh, it is tiny! Good God! Holy crap, look how tiny that thing is. It's sitting on the tip of a match and is making the match look big. Look how tiny. Man, I thought them little lizards I'd be seeing outside of my crib were small because they could be like that big. This is itty bitty. Look at it on the tip of this man's finger. This man's finger looks huge compared to that little tiny little Itty bitty little titty shimmy gimme gimme. It's so tiny. Meters long and can comfortably sit on an aspirin pill. It has swivelly eyes and a large hemipenis. How? Like many. How do they even see this thing? It's like the size of a bug. What does it eat? Lilliputian chameleon. It's the size of an ant. It can't even eat an ant. <laughs> Never judge a guy's size by his height, ladies. Angeluk Razafimanansawa, a tourist guide in Montang Dambra National Park in northern Madagascar, who also supports scientific missions, collected two specimens, a male and a female, in 2012. The female was 19 millimeters larger than the male, which experts believe is one of the reasons why males have a larger reproductive apparatus. It's a better match that way, at least for the lady chameleon. A subspecies of Brookesia chameleons has undergone extraordinary miniaturization, prompting experts to look for synonyms for tiny in dictionaries. Because Brookesia minima already exists, the researchers chose Nana, which is derived from the Latin word for dwarf. Gla and his colleagues recently published their findings in scientific reports. Number 11. Blood Red Jellyfish 
The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration may have discovered a previously unknown jellyfish bobbing at 2,300 feet beneath the surface. Ow. The jelly in question has a blood-red body and appears to belong to the species Poralia, the researchers stated in a statement. It looks like a floating beret adorned with delicate tassels, Poralia rufescens, which has a bell-shaped body with 30 tentacles, and dwells in deep water across the world seas is the only other Peralia species known so far. As yet, what? unnamed jellyfish was discovered in film from a deep water dive off the coast of Newport, Rhode Island. Deep Discoverer, the agency's remotely operated vehicle, dived to a maximum depth of around 3,000 feet in the North Atlantic Ocean and filmed any species it saw. Quinn Kirasek, a NOAA intern at Junior at a college in Pennsylvania, who is studying biology, first saw the jellyfish while annotating film from the dive. Tinophores, also known as comb jellies, nidarians, crabs, and actinotergy, aka ray finned fishes, were among the creatures sighted, according to Girasak. We also. Yo, I've seen jellyfish like this that have this aura of glow, but not fully red saw several undescribed families and potential new species, NOAA's North Atlantic Stepping Stones mission, which took place from June 30th to July 29th, included this deep dive down the water column. That. In order to explore the elusive deep sea species hiding in the vicinity, the crew made 25 dives at depths ranging from 820 to 13,124 feet. Number 10. New Chameleon Species Discovered in Ethiopia Chameleons are one of the most intriguing squamate reptile families, not only because of their unique behavior and adaptations, but also because of their incredible species variety and range. The Chameleonidae family includes about... Yo, I never recognized it until now, but these chameleons, their eyes, like the what looks like the big ball of the eye, has the scales like of their skin on the whole eyeball except for the pupil. 215 species that range from Africa, Southern Europe, and the Middle East to areas of South Asia. Apart from Madagascar's well-known chameleon variety, it was thought that this family originated in continental Africa. The African continent is home to not just a diverse range of chameleon species, but also a large number of endemics that are only found in certain highlands or mountain ranges. The genus Kinyongia, as well as numerous species of the genus Trioceros, to which the newly found species belongs, are examples. The Bale Mountains in south-central Ethiopia are regarded as one of the most unique centers of endemism with an extraordinary number of plants and animals found nowhere else, stated lead author Thor Kapech of the Alexander Koenig Research Museum when we discovered another unique representative of the chameleon genus Trioceros from the northern slopes of the Bale Mountains. There were already two species of the chameleon genus Trioceros known to be restricted to the Bale region. It's worth noting that this new chameleon is thought to be a member of a species complex that includes the widely distributed Ethiopian chameleon. Number 9. Alien-like spindly squid. Ah oh, man, I remember when I first seen a clip of one of these things. I legit thought this was an alien underwater. Scientists recently obtained spectacular footage of a ghostly squid with massive iridescent fins. I think this was the clip, and I thought it could have been fake. ...and weird elbow-like bends in its tentacles during an excursion in the Gulf of Mexico. To date, there have been fewer than 20 confirmed sightings of this deep-sea cephalopod, known as a big fin squid. And this recent sighting adds one more to the list, according to a statement from NOAA Ocean Exploration. Scientists from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration discovered the elusive squid during their recent window to the deep 2021 Southeast ROV and mapping expedition, which examined poorly studied deep water regions. Uh I feel like, if anything, this would be a once in a lifetime 
opportunity had you seen one of these in person. The coast of the United States, the researchers saw a set of spindly blue appendages drifting by their remotely controlled vehicle while shooting underwater near the West Florida Escarpment, a high slope in the sea floor that separates the shallow coastal waters from the deep Gulf of Mexico. The camera pans around to see the big fin squid in all of its splendor with its eight on. Yeah, this this thing right here, it it be so low, so deep within the ocean. That's why people be like, "What the what? <laughs> this is an alien underwater." Submarines can catch it. Arms and two tentacles strewn behind it. The creature's huge fins, which extend from the mantle, the main part of its body, ripple softly in the water, similar to how stingray fins flap. The squid's organs are held in the see-through mantle, which look pale yellow and pink in the ROV's light. Number. Um, that thing has tentacles so freaking long. Right. The Atlantic Coast Leopard Frog. The Atlantic Coast Leopard Frog is a frog that is only found in the United States. It is regarded as a real frog since it belongs to the species Reina Sensuleto, having smooth skin and a slender waist. Its range ranges from Connecticut to North Carolina along the northern half of the eastern seaboard. The leopard-like speckles on its legs and back give the animal its popular name. It is one of numerous leopard frog species that are identified by their mating call, genetic variances, habitat, and physical differences. The leopard frog of the Atlantic coast is one of numerous species of leopard frogs. Its scientific name, Kofeldi, comes from Staten Island herpetologist Carl Frederick Kofeld, who postulated in 1936 that a third species of leopard frog may be found in the New York tri-state area, namely Stratton Island, in honor of Kofeld. The Author team who described the species in 2014 named it after him. The frog's colors varies from mint gray to light olive green, with brown patches strewn across their backs and legs in an uneven pattern. Wait, did he say rather than not these frogs were poisonous? Their heads. Because that's always my concern. They're marked by dark snout lines. They have huge eyes and powerful legs that they use to leap. Many people use nocturnal darker tones and diurnal brighter colors and their coloring has been seen to shift between day and night as well as with the seasons males have enormous vo i was wondering the same thing about the um the lizards the iguanas whatever they were that we just saw like do all of their colors change too and i'm surprised i ain't never known for a frog's color to change vocal sacs on either side of their heads that they utilize to make a mating call rather of the repeating chuck of comparable species this i was wondering why he was puffing his cheeks up like that he's getting ready for a mating call Fry is a single and unique ack 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 number seven photo bombing squid <laughs> Squids are one of the ocean's most enigmatic organisms, so when one appears on video, it's a major event. That's what occurred last year to a group of academics who set out to study the Red Sea's depths. They not only discovered a shipwreck, but their underwater camera was also photobombed by a massive squid the size of a human. The species... Man, that was a kraken. <laughs> A squid the size of a human, man, that is a kraken. When they get to human size, they're kraken level. Even though they get bigger to become more kraken-like, uh-uh, not me. ...was discovered as the team was inspecting the wreckage of the Pella, which <laughs> sunk in November 2011. Woo! Despite the fact that the sighting occurred last year, it wasn't until September 2021 that the purpleback flying squid was recognized. While the average purpleback grows to be around two feet long, this one was a full human size. Unfortunately, it was not one of the legendary giant squids, which may the grow cracking. up to six 60 feet long. Nonetheless, wait, no, they got actual kraken sized squids that grow to 60 feet long. That one was six feet, and y'all said that was above average. I said the average is like two to three, but 60 that's a real kraken.
It's a remarkable find in a video made of the finding. Science program head Maddie Rodrigue remarked, I will never forget what happened next for the rest of my life. All of a sudden, while we're gazing at the shipwreck's bow, this gigantic monster appears, looks at the ROV, and wraps its entire body around the ruin. Rodrigue was a member of Ocean X, a group of marine biologists and filmmakers that dived down to 2008 800 feet below the Red Sea surface. Number 6. The World's Smallest Lemur Three new mouse leap. I think you hold on to your pinky finger. Lemur species have been reported by scientists from the German Primate Center, the University of Kentucky, the American Duke Lemur Center, that? and the University. Why oh, he attacked that piece of cheese like that? He was like. <laughs> Did you see that? You look at him, he's so adorable. Mate Center, the University of Kentucky, the American Duke Lemur Center, and the Université d'Antananarivo in Madagascar. They exist in Madagascar. Oh, it's a banana. Okay. South and East, bringing the total number of mouse lemur species to 24. Only two species of the 24? They better make them things mate. These little nocturnal primates were recognized 20 years ago. It's so weird to me. It's almost like lemurs are co uh, like a rodent combined with a monkey. It's like a rodent and a monkey. They splice the genes to create lemurs. Different variations of lemurs because they use different variations of monkeys and rodents. And this freaking tiny little lemur looked like a, a, a half... Um, I don't know what kind of monkey, but in the other half is a, <laughs> a rat. The new descriptions were made feasible by modern genomic technologies and excursions to remote... Because look at the hands, man. Those are freaking hands, and this is why you call them primates and not rats or rodents. Because they might have a rodent-like face, but then they got whole hands and fingers and fingernails. Look at this thing. It got... Fingernails and thumbs. So crazy. Cations. Mouse lemurs are tiny nocturnal primates that can only be found in Madagascar, and they all have brown hair and huge eyes in common. Only genetic approaches can properly discriminate between different species. However, how I wonder if I can make this thing right. It's like give him a tiny little pencil. <laughs> Do his alphabet. Much of a difference between two populations must exist in order to be classified. They even got long tails like rats. By using new objective methods to assess genetic differences between individuals, we were able to find independent evidence that these three mouse lemurs represent new. Wait, did he just say mouse lemurs? Cause this look like what? I've never seen this one before. Species explains Peter Capeller, head of the German Primate Center's Behavioral Ecology and Sociobiology Unit. Number five, a barrelly fish. Bro, this is so crazy. This unusual footage of a barrelly fish. Yo, if I was in the ocean and I saw this fish, oh my god. If I was in the submarine and I saw this fish, I would be like, you guys, aliens are real. I saw a fish. It was a robot fish, and it had two small aliens in it, and it was swimming. <laughs> they were controlling this robot fish because that's what it looks like inside of this thing's head. It looked like there's two small aliens. This unusual. You see that? It's like those are the brains of the aliens, and they're green. Well, footage of a barrel eye fish, or Macropina microstoma, was posted by the Monterey Bay Aquarium oh, Research crazy. Institute. This strange fish has tubular eyes and a translucent skull. It dwells in the deep water, That's in so the twilight crazy. zone, a mid-level ocean region just beyond the reach of sunlight, according to experts. Ventana and dock rickets are two remotely controlled old vehicles owned by Dude, MB. I'm telling you, bro. I'm like, yo, this fish, it was being controlled by aliens. They were swimming it. It was like, 
Instead of them making submarines, they made a real fish to be in. Yay, They've completed over 5,600 successful dives and captured over 27,600 hours of footage. However, they've only seen this strange fish nine times. The barrel eye dwells in depths of 2,000 to 2,600 feet. It only nine times they've seen this thing the ocean's twilight zone. Its eyes scan the sky for its preferred meal, mainly little crustaceans trapped in the testicles of siphonophores, which what? throw shadows in the thin shimmer of sunlight from above. But with its eyes pointing upward and its mouth forward, how does this fish eat? Number four, Popa Langer, newest primate species. In Myanmar, a new primate known as Popa Langer. I've seen it, but I don't remember the name of it. Popa Langer. Has been identified. After a comprehensive genetic and morphological research, which included a 100 year old specimen kept at London's Natural History Museum, the new species was named. To validate the presence of the new species, the findings of the genetic research were merged with data from specimens in other museums, as well as field surveys. Meh. I'm over here like, how did they just now finding it, finding out about this monkey, man? This monkey has been walking around doing blackface for the longest, man. Look at that. That's like the perfect depiction of what blackface is. Conducted by the German Primate Center, Ooh. GMC, and Fauna and Flora International in Myanmar, alongside partner organizations. The Popa Langer is found in central Myanmar, and Popa Langer is named for the holy Mount Popa, which is home to the species' greatest population. Of little over a hundred individuals, Mount Popa is an extinct volcano that is home to Myanmar's most revered nut spirits, as well as a significant wildlife refuge and... Now that's fascinating, okay. ...a religious pilgrimage site. Number three, Salazar's Pit Viper. Trimerosaurus salazar, or the salazar's pit viper, is a new green pit viper species discovered in a Himalayan biodiversity hotspot and named after Salazar Slytherin, a character from J.K. Rowling's Harry epic Potter. Harry Potter series. The snake, which is nocturnal and has a distinct... That's cool. To, play, to have played the character that this snake is named after... Oh man, that is dope. ...reddish orange stripe on the head and body of males was discovered in India during the herpetological expedition in the summer of 2019. The discovery was reported in Zoo Systematics and Evolution, an open access publication in an email to Manga Bay. Main researcher Zishan A. Mirza of the National Center for Biological Science in Bengaluru, India said, I am a Potterhead and so are to other authors in the paper. This was a tribute to the most fascinating story I've ever read or heard, and it shaped my childhood. We wanted to honor J.K. Rowling for introducing the world to the Harry Potter universe by naming it after Salazar Slytherin. Number two, new species of parasitic wasps found in fossil flies. Hundreds of maggots munched their way through decomposing bodies 35 million years ago in what is now France. When they'd gotten their fill, they folded themselves into a little bundle and waited to turn into flies. The parasitic wasps then appeared. Researchers have revealed the superbly preserved remnants of 55 ancient fly pupae that harbor parasitic wasp invaders in a rare example of a fossil discovered inside a fossil. The scientists captured photos of the wasps in astonishing clarity, down to their frail wings and back hairs, using Ooh. modern technology to see into the rice-sized fossils without destroying them. For wasp species previously unknown to science... That's crazy that they were able to pull all of this detail out of this what was once a fossil just using modern technology. Man, I had this idea for a tweet earlier. I'm like, human society as a people, as humans, we have not evolved much at all over the past X amount of thousands of years. 
but yet our technology has advanced so much and so quickly that pretty soon is going to out advance us as a human species and that can't be good are in the hall while some were quite similar to current parasitic wasps others were so dissimilar that they belonged to two other genera according to the team's findings published in the journal nature number one carolina sandhill salamander North Carolina already boasts more salamander species than any other state in the U.S. Really? with 63, and has now added one more to bring the total to 64. Wow. The Carolina Sandhill salamander lives in the sandhills of North Carolina, where it can be found along springs, seeps, and tiny black water streams. The Carolina Sandhill salamander was previously thought to be a subspecies of the southern two-lined salamander, but recently Researchers at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences used next-generation sequencing technology to show that the new species is genetically distinct from other two-lined salamander species. That's crazy. They use what kind of technology to determine that? That is wild. They really went that extra mile to determine, all right, is this a species? A, a, a branch off species of salamanders that we currently have or is this a brand new one? His findings, which were published in Herpetologica, support more obvious evidence since the Carolina Sandhill salamander varies from other members of the complex in coloring, size, and natural history. Do it's you like dream outcast. of discovering a new species? It's like an outcast salamander. Like You put it with the other ones and, it, and they don't know what to do. They're like, hey, he doesn't doesn't belong here. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, if y'all enjoyed this as much as I did, we learned some stuff today. We learned some stuff, and I want to look at the part one video. So y'all comment down below if y'all want to see part one, and I'm going to have the link to part two down in the description box. But anyway, I'm going to catch y'all in the next one. See ya!